views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. We're back for another edition of The Ram with Coach Gately. It's a new year, but a continued hot stretch for Fordham women's basketball. Dom, five straight wins, quite a recent run for the Rams. They won the Fordham Holiday Classic, E-Man. They're fourth in the 12th annual Fordham Holiday Classic. And then they beat George Washington, 1-0 in conference play. Last year's A-10 champs. A uh, great couple of weeks. A very impressive win in the Holiday Classic and very good surge mm -hmm. to enter conference play. And now you're seeing that leak over into the win against George Washington. And really, mm -hmm. the sky's the limit in a wide-open A-10. Definitely. You got Dayton, you got Duquesne, the top teams. Fordham came in preseason number three with George Washington. They beat them. You got Dayton on January 20th to start off with them. But then we got Richmond and St. Louis coming up for the Fordham Rams. Who better to discuss the Red Hot Rams than head coach Stephanie Gately? She joins the show next. Fordham women's basketball head coach Stephanie Gately is in the building. Dom, there's even more optimism surrounding the Rams than when we last spoke. Like I just mentioned, we're joining Coach Gately right now. You guys won the Fordham Holiday Classic. Why is that so special for you? It, it, for a lot of reasons. One, mm -hmm. it, it's the final two games before we get into conference play. Um, it's also an opportunity. One of the reasons I've always liked the Christmas tournament, it gives the kids the chance for their families to be there. Also, my family, I had about 25 people there. We do a game in honor of my dad. The first round game is honor is honor of my dad. You know, it's you know take a kid to a game, and he was always about giving back. So, I actually think he was probably helping a little bit on the rims that day. Coach, it's been a little bit since we last spoke, and you guys were kind of developing a rhythm there, fresh off a win against Iona, heading into that. Um, well, fresh off the win against Columbia, heading into the Iona game. How has the vibe around the team changed since then? I think the kids are starting to understand what, what, what we've preached early, that you know, defense is going to determine the games. Because, I mean, even in the beginning of the year, we weren't shooting the ball well. And we dropped some games because we really weren't solid defensively. And now, you know, the George Washington is a great example of the fact that we started off really, really solid, developed a big lead because we are playing defense. And then in spite of the fact that we went cold and had two single-digit quarters, we still were able to to you know, have a double-digit win over GW. And I think that came from the success we had. I think it started in the Iona game, and then I think it carried over to the Christmas tournament. And then I think that it definitely filtered over into the GW game. So speaking of that Fordham Holiday Classic, in the first game against Maine, Bree had 27 points. Caitlin Downey had the game tie basket. Then Meg Johnson showed up with five points in overtime. Those young guys showing up, how important is that? It's been critical, and then that's why you know the early going schedule has been so difficult. But it's given the young kids an opportunity to see bigger, faster, stronger, and and because of that, you know now that we've been able to do that, now we get to conference play. You know, I told the kids before we, you know, when we played, you know, Maine and Middle Tennessee, I said these are teams that would be in the top half of the A10. So this is going to give us a good idea where we're at, and I think we really responded well defensively. And and then again, like when we make shots, we're going to be hard to beat if we continue to, to play defense because if we can do well, I mean the last five games we've given up 48 points an average of 48 points and if we can do that and make shots we're gonna be a tough team to beat. Do you place an extra emphasis on starting a game quick? I know against Maine you fell behind early uh, conversely against George Washington a red-hot start set the pace for the game it seemed to be one defining quarter for the team in some of these games so is it extra important to get out to an early lead? I try not to put too much of an emphasis on that because sometimes you just don't know. I mean, like, as long as we get good shots, I, I don't want the kids to panic if, if the shots aren't going and, you know, say another team. My thing is, if another team makes shots that we're dictating we want to give up, then we're doing our job and eventually the odds will carry over. But I don't like to say let's, let's put them away in the first quarter because I don't think it's realistic. It's a 40-minute game. So we just say, hey, you know, if we make shots, it's a bonus. You know, as long as we stay true to playing defense and rebound, then we're right where we need to be. Speaking of defense and now transition to offense, Lauren Holden in the last two games, she's been shooting the ball a lot better. Five of nine against Middle Tennessee and against George Washington, um, four of seven from three. What is she doing differently or shots just falling right now? It's a little bit of both. I, I, I think, you know, one of the things Lauren and I spoke about was I think in the beginning of the year when she wasn't shooting well, I, I think she lost sight of number one, you're a captain and you're a leader. Number two, you're a great defender. So take your mind off 
the offense and, and let the other things take over, and then offense will take care of itself. And, and I said, and you got to get extra, extra rep in, reps in. I said to her, like, how much are you getting in? She goes, oh, I try to get on the gun once a week. I said, seriously? I said, I was in every day, like, making 500 a day. You know, like, you've got, it's like studying for a course. You've got to get reps in. You've got to study. You've got to do all those things in order to have the confidence. And I think now that she's getting the extra reps in, now that we've had a little break, obviously, with, with that not having any classes, I think that has helped a great deal. Holiday Classic was a big lift for the team, but now you classify it as almost two years. You're entering A-10 play. You have a 1-0 and start, the win against George Washington, and that was the first program win ever on the road in D.C., in that building. How did that feel to get the first program win ever in that building? I mean, that was great. I mean, because, you know, like any team, they want to be part of the first, you know, and so I told them, you know, we have not won here. It's, we're 0-12 at, at, at GW, so this is a great opportunity to send a message, to send a message that, you know, learning to win on the road and on also, you know, doing first. I mean, the overall record was like 20 and five against GW and we've been part of some of those wins recently. And we want to see that, you know, Fordham is now obviously a, a team that is not taken lightly anymore. It's a team that has gained a great deal of respect and winning on the road just continues to build that respect. So speaking of that win against George Washington, right now they're struggling a little bit, but they are the A-10 champs. You just touched on it, but is that important for you going in further into the A-10 that you guys did beat the A-10 champs from last year? Do you just try to not to worry, even worry about it? Well, sometimes you, you, you recognize it just because of the fact that kids, you know, kids read, so they know what records are. But, you know, you also have to realize last year they started off, they struggled, and they end up coming back to win it. Mm -hmm. So, like anybody else, we look at conference as a second season, and that's the point I made to the kids. Every team comes in and sees conference play as a second season. There's some teams that are sitting there struggling and say, all right, now, now we can play together. And then there's teams like us who had the best out-of-conference record, you know, or one of them, with tied, I think, with, the, with, with BCU or somebody else with the most amount of wins, that we're sitting there saying, let's continue and pick up where we left off, which is what you'd rather be, rather than hope that it happens. We've proven that it's happened, and we just need to continue it. I think the thing that stuck out to me most about the George Washington game, when you shoot 7 of 11 from 3 to start a game, you can blow any team out the building. But when in the third quarter you outscore the team by 11 and shoot 29%, I think that's more the M.O. of what your team has been working for. Yeah, and I've gone back a few times with them in regard to Florida when, like, I take a team like Quinnipiac, who when they lost to Texas by one shot, 28% and got out-rebounded by 13. Mm -hmm. So that means that you've got to be playing some hard-nosed defense. So I just have always been a firm believer that if you play defense, you will hang around in spite of how you shoot. Yeah, speaking of defense as well, we have Mary Goulden coming on in a little bit. When you see her take those charts, how big is that for a team? Well, she takes such pride in that, you know. So we've made some adjustments on who she defends because Mary's a great help defender. So if we, if we put her on somebody she's got to chase around, she's not as effective as she is when she's playing someone that she can sit in the lane and what we refer to as be our traffic cop and kind of clean up anybody's mistakes. And I think the kids have a lot of confidence knowing that she's there behind them. Lauren Holden, you mentioned the trend there, nine for her last 17 from three. Mary Goulding chipping in a lot. We'll talk to her later. Bree Cavanaugh talking to her later. She's become much more of a well-rounded source in terms of rebounding as well. Three of her last four games, double-digit rebounds. Have you really seen that improvement from last year to this year when she doesn't score, she's able to make those improvements? Well, the conversation I had with Bree in the offseason was two things, defense and rebounding, because she scored a lot last year, but she gave up the same amount. You know, Now I think she, she's, she's starting to focus. I still think she needs to continue to have a serious focus to defense. I think she could be even a better defender than she's doing right now. I'm pleased where she is on the boards. You know, we, we, we track their percentage rate for boxing out and the crash rate. She didn't crash as much as she could against GW. And, and you know, there's a lot of offensive rebounds to be had when you're shooting 30%. And she's an outstanding rebounder when she crashes. So I got to stay on her about taking breaks. And, and the biggest thing is just continuing to de develop her overall game because I don't think she realizes that she can be a factor in other areas. And, and I, that's why I'm so proud of the rebounding because – She's capable of doing that. The guards sometimes are the forgotten ones that people don't box out. And if you crash, you can pick up a lot of extra points, especially like in the GW game, her shot didn't drop. So you, you can make yourself a factor by just rebounding. Well, when we come back, we head over to the lineup. We were talking about a couple of those players. Our inside look from two Ram players. This week, it's senior Mary Goulding and redshirt sophomore Bree Cavanaugh. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Ram with Coach Gately, and we're excited for this week's edition of the lineup as we bring in senior Mary Goulding 
Redshirt sophomore Bree Cavanaugh. Guys, welcome. It's good to have you. Thanks for having Thank us. You. Thank you for having us. Two integral pieces to the Rams this year as we break down uh, what's been a very good stretch for the Rams lately. We broke it down with Coach, the five straight wins. Mary, your initial thoughts on what was a hard-fought defensive battle at GW? Um, I, I think I can say it for everyone. I think we're really happy with um, our defensive effort. I'm really proud of the girls. I'm really proud of uh, their focus um, and... Yeah, the outcome really showed our defensive effort. You know, once we play defense, you know, we can we can really win any game. Right. I mean, Mary hit it on the nail. You know, it's you know it comes down to defense. Um, I think we take a lot of pride in defense, and I think um, we paid attention to the little details, and our focus was there 100. percent um, And you know, this game really you know showed us like you know we play defense, like we can win games a lot. You guys are speaking of defense, but Brie, you had 27 points against Maine. I know you don't like to talk about yourself. You did win the Fordham Holiday Classic MVP. Any thoughts? What was your reaction to that? Um, I mean, <laughs> I was more focused on the fact that, you know, we got two great wins as a team. Um, you know, playing against Maine, you know, Maine's a great team. Um, and, you know, we the past five games we averaged, you know, 40, you know, we kept our opponents to 48 points a game. So I think, you know, with the Holiday Classic, I think defense really, you know, spoke for our team. Bree, we were talking about this with Coach, some of the improvements you made to your game. You are still scoring a lot, but some games uh, where the scoring is a little bit awry, you're – contributing in other areas, whether it be steals, rebounds. Is that an improvement you feel you've made from last year? Yeah, um, I do agree with that. I mean, it's not it's it's not about scoring. I mean, it's not just offense. There's defense, there's rebounding. Like you said, there's, you know, there, you can go for steals. There's, you know, there's other parts of basketball that, you know, um, I'm taking, you know, great pride in focusing, and especially defense, because Coach has talked to me a lot about defense. Um, I know last year, like, you know, Coach always tells me, oh, you scored 17, but you gave up 17, you know, so I'm, you know, focusing more on. <laughs> uh, plus minus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Plus minus. yeah. So, uh, so now I'm putting more emphasis on uh, defense this year. There's a question for both of you. What would you say um, from your game last year has, is different this year, what you approved upon? Um, I think... It's kind of, uh, for me, it might not be something that's like as noticeable, but I think I've improved a lot in leadership um, just with the team. I've learned a lot. Um, Lauren and I have been through a lot together, and I think this year, um, yeah, we've really kind of stepped up um, and like helped the girls kind of come together. I um, mean, you know, when they needed a harsh word, which both of us don't like saying mm. the hard stuff, um, this year we've really learned to kind of when to say the hard stuff and when to, you know, compliment or, you know, give a constructive criticism? Um, I'd probably say uh, rebounding, you know, because, uh, I mean, last year I didn't really focus on rebounding and, um, you know, if the ball came to me, I, okay, I would grab the rebound, but I think um, this year I'm more focused on, you know, boxing out and, you know, crashing is getting there, okay, I'm almost there, <laughs> but um, um, defensive rebounding and definitely um, trying to work on offensive rebounding. Mary, you were talking about your new leadership role as a senior. Did you say that kind of spanned back to last year when you were junior and now you're just kind of learning and building upon that leadership role that you stepped into last year? Uh, yeah, I think for me the hardest thing was in my junior year stepping up and um, accepting the co-captain role um, in my junior year. Uh, but from there, uh, we learned, both Lauren and I learned a lot last year and I think we've used that to kind of transition into this year with like a younger team. Um, so, yeah, like the past two years, I've just really learned a lot about leadership. Some of the people that Mary is mentoring, you speak of some of the freshmen, Caitlin Downey, Meg Jonathan, two of the impressive freshmen on the team right now. What have you seen from them, and have you tried to kind of teach them in your leadership role? Uh, I'm just absolutely amazed and impressed with the freshmen this year. I think Bree can attest to it as well. They've literally just, you know, come in guns firing, like from summer session, because we were here in the summer. And they're just like sponges. They want to learn as much as possible. They want to get better. You know, they're open to criticism. If I say something like, hey, like, you know, step to the ball, or maybe, you know, did you watch me on this defensive play? Like, hang around for a little bit, and then you can get back. Or, you know, just little things like that. They're really receptive. Um, and then they'll come to us, like, whether it be Bree, Lauren, and me, you know, and say, like, hey, what should I improve on? Or, you know, they, they're just really, you know, eager to get better, um, which is really awesome. Um, but they're also very receptive. Um, you know, listening to us, so that's huge on their behalf. Mary, for you personally, you made 12 threes last year. You have 12 this year already. Are you looking to take more threes, or are you just taking what the defense gives you? <laughs> Didn't know that. <laughs> Interesting fact. Um, to be honest, I don't actually think a lot about that. You just it's, go up and shoot. It's more just kind of like I give what the defense takes, and, you know, like I know what coaches expect of me. I know that, like, 
when I get on court, coach isn't saying like, Mary, jack up threes. Like, you're our three point shooter. You know, like yeah. I know that, but I also know that she, she trusts me. And so like, if, um, you know, like time's running, running down or, you know, if the defense aren't playing me, then she, you know, is open for me taking that, that shot. So if they're going to give it to me, then I mean, they're going to make them pay. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the time running down, in those big spots, taking a leadership role as a sophomore, is that something you kind of embrace when the clock's running down, wanting the ball in your hands, Bray? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, shot clock's running down. You know, if, you know, coach always says, you know, quick hold or quick stack. You know, I, you know, I don't care. Like, give me the ball. Like, you know, I, I'll, I'll take it. You know what I mean? I'm not really scared or anything like that, but. I do also know that, um, you know, Lauren or Kenny can do the same thing. So I guess, you know, with Coach having faith in myself and not only myself, but, you know, Lauren and Kenny to take the ball, I think that's uh, pretty, pretty deep. Guys, thanks for doing this. Thank you. Cheers. It was fun having uh, <laughs> two of the key players on the team. Mary on again. She skipped right. all last year. Yeah, yeah she, she <laughs> ditched us last year, so, so we're happy Mary can be part of the show. Well, we're not getting rid of them right now because coming up, Jackson Heil goes on the court with Coach and these two and breaks down defense and rebounding. Should be a good one. That should be a good one. Welcome back to the Ram with Coach Gately. I'm Jackson Howe. We got everyone here, Coach Gately, Bree, Mary. We're going to go over two things that I know Coach loves to go over, defense, rebounding. We're going to start on attacking the glass, and Coach, the floor is yours. Rebounding. Okay, one of my all-time favorite rebounders was Charles Barkley. Can't okay, go wrong there. Yeah, I loved his philosophy of he who wants it or she who wants it goes and gets it. So one of the drills that I started was I actually stole from a clinic I saw with uh, Jim Calhoun was the old UConn coach. And it has three parts. So the first part is, it, you know, we, there would be a red team or a maroon team here and a gray team here. And one by one they come up, typically at the same position. And we just literally throw it up. It starts with their attitude. I think these guys have, you know, <laughs> the fierce <laughs> attitude. I'm not going to make them go get it because we have a game tomorrow. But I literally throw it up and see who wants it gets it. That's part one. And part two would be now we throw it off the backboard and they have to go box each other out. And then the third part is they go get it off the backboard it gets kicked out, and then they make a one-on-one -on -one move. They get it back. So, um, so it would look like this. So basically I would throw it up. they go get it, and then they'd have to outlet it to either side, and the other, team, the other person could pressure it. But, you know, Mary's going to simulate, I don't know if you want her to simulate yeah, actually what, what, how we do when we break down the rebounding. Mary, she you want to simulate what our actual things are, and you can explain it. <clears throat> okay. So, um, yeah, Coach takes huge pride in rebounding, and um, she always says that, like, first you have to find your player. So, like, you can't just turn around and, and go get the ball because, you know, your player's going to do the same thing. So, first of all, when the shot goes up, you know, the whole team calls out shot. So then everyone knows, okay, immediately box. So you want to find your player, usually with a, uh, I mean, what would you call this? Forearm. Forearm. Yeah. Forearm. Hit them here, and then you cross your leg, come back. Don't hold down here because as soon as your hand's going down there, then that's when, like, the foul, um, you can't hold them. You want to have your hands up here so that when the ball comes, jump, grab the ball. If they try and like jump over you and you jump, then it's a foul on them. But if your hands are down here and then they try and get the ball, then most likely the foul's going to go on you. Okay. So I got a few things here for both of you guys, and I'll start with Coach Achi on this one. You have two very different stylistic mm -hmm. players. I mean, you have Bree, who's obviously a guard, plays the perimeter a lot, and then you have Mary, who even though she is on the perimeter a lot, she's probably one of your biggest players in terms of when you play. Is there different points of emphasis in terms of rebounding as a guard and rebounding as a big that you like to preach, or is it kind of just the same thing, go out and grind and go get the ball? Well, I mean, there's going to be times when we have mismatches because defensively we get caught on the switch. You know, it's not going to be your typical box out. Bree, maybe you can demonstrate what a face box is. So if Bree gets stuck on a big, and, you know, we're in a situation where it's a really good rebounder like G was for us mm -hmm. last year, we will tell them the face box. So her only job is you know, is just to go find that person and basically mirror her and so that she can't get the ball. Okay. And so it's a different strategy, but it's confusing to this person. And this way she can't even get, you know, so she kind of mirrors wherever her actions are. Mary will be the typical rebounding. Mm -hmm. I mean, like from a guard position, and I get on Brie a lot just because offensive rebounding, a lot of times guards forget to box out. Mm -hmm. And your, your rebounding rate for crash rate should be about 50%. And so we track everything they do on both, you know, in games, both mm -hmm. boxing out or crashing. So, you know, 
you know, that's something I get on Bree because I think she can pick up some extra possessions doing that. And not only your two best rebounders on the team, your two best offensive rebounders as well. And is there a way that you can really teach offensive rebounding as opposed to really just effort on that part? Because I feel like a lot of offensive rebounding is just crashing the glass, going after it hard and wanting it more. But is there a specific art to teaching offensive rebounding? Well, a lot of people use the term they have a nose for the ball. Both these kids have a nose for the mm -hmm. ball. And, you know, they follow the flight of the ball. And, other kids you have to teach. Like we do some drills to actually show, you know, the ball's taken on one side of the court. The percentages are saying that they missed. They're it's mostly going the other. So we'll do drills like that. We'll do effort drills. We do a lot of offensive rebounding drills. Really? Yeah, we do a ton. I mean, I know Bree and I talked about, you know, when she went to school. Some people don't do any rebounding drills. Mm -hmm. You really? know, for us, I'm a big believer. If you expect them to do it again, you better practice it. So we do a lot of defense and a lot of offensive rebounding drills because we expect them to do it in a game. But so if, if this way, if we don't practice it, then how can I demand it? So you get what you demand. Of course. And just one last thing as we wrap this up, in terms of team rebounding, because it obviously is such a team effort. And for you, I know you like to play a very small lineup, and I'll pose this question to you guys. Is there an extra emphasis on rebounding specifically for you guys because you guys like to play a small lineup? And I can start with you guys as players, how much you guys are focusing on it. But is there that extra oomph to go out and grab a rebound every time knowing you guys have a smaller lineup? I mean, I think rebounding is rebounding. I don't think it matters yeah. who you're up against. Um, ultimately, gives you an extra possession on offense, and then defense, it limits them to just one shot. Um, so I don't actually think it matters what opposition it is. Um, I think it's just a team effort. Like, if there is a big player, and so, like, I'll say, like, hey, Brie, like, have my back. Like, I'm just going to box her out. Like, I don't care about getting a rebound, but she's their number one rebounder, mm -hmm. so I'm just going to box her out and, like, come in for the rebound. You know, so we work as a team, like maybe, you know, they have a huge rebounder, so they're not worried about getting the rebound, but all the other four players will go to the glass. Same for you, Bree. Um, yeah, same. But I think it um, has to do with will, too. I think, you know, the will to, you know, go get the ball or the will to box out. Um, I mean, I guess it goes along with effort. You know, you just have to want to do it. For sure. Coach, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. I, I think these guys emulate that great. I mean, again, when you have great athletes, they make it look easy, but the biggest mistake you see from kids coming from high school is they're never demanded to box out. So... You know, you get what you demand, and these guys do a great job following those demands. <laughs> Rebounding from the best here. <laughs> Almost done. Time to wrap it up. We're going to look ahead with Coach and E-Man and Dom, but first let's take a quick break. Rejoined by Coach for our Looking Ahead segment. Just saw some great stuff on rebounding and the basis of how the Rams operate. 1-0 uh, in conference play now and playing Richmond. This game, this show will air after that game, mm -hmm. but we're still going to uh, do our thing and preview that game. Richmond, number 10 in the preseason poll. They were a very defensive-oriented team last year. Mm -hmm. What do you think's changed? Because they have struggled some at 3-11. and I mean, they graduated a lot. I mean, when you have to rely on freshmen, and it's the same thing for us. I mean, we have 13 freshmen or sophomores, and in the first couple games, we're not the same defensive team that we are now. So I think it, t it takes a good 10 games to get that defensive feel down, and I think for them, they graduated a lot, you know, and so they have to rely a lot on their underclassmen. Yeah, speaking of Richmond, still sticking with that, you man alluded to their struggles in the last three seasons under 500. When you're going into a game and you're preparing for you personally, do you look at the record or do you just see how your team matches up? I mean, it's hard not to see the record, but then what I do is I look at the schedule, you know, okay. and I see who you, who you beat or who you lost to. And when I break down tape, my first thing is I always go in with the, the premise that we're always going to play good defense, but how hard is it going to be for us to score? And then I study statistics. I'll study, you know, their individual statistics and their statistics within conference. Like, what's their field goal percentage defense? Because that speaks of volumes. I mean, what, how many points have they given up? You know, how hard do they defend? And that tells me a lot about how hard we're going to have to work on the offensive end. Remember last year with Richmond, they answered the tournament as kind of a dark horse, and they were able to take down Duquesne. So mm -hmm. it speaks to the defensive approach and, and the mindset of the program. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Mike, Mike Schaefer does a great job. I mean, he's been there for a while. He's had a lot of success. And... And again, when you know they had a tragedy a few years ago when Ginny Doyle passed away, and she, I was one of her mentors, and um, and I think it's been hard for them to kind of rebound from that, you know, when you have such a, a tough thing happen, and she was such an integral part of that program. So Mike's trying to recover from that, and and then you're trying to replace, you know, some really good players with some young kids. So it, it it'll take them time, but again, we don't see any name on the jersey. They stand between us being two and zero in conference, and that's what matters to us. Now, going to the actual game, it's at 11 a.m. We've had some 11 a.m. games in the past. Is that hard to get the players ready for an early game like that? 
I got on him a lot about the GW game because I just felt like when we started off, at, you know, Ball State at 11 a.m., we did not come ready to play. It took us a half time to kind of wake up, and so that was disappointing. So we put a point of emphasis on that. So I, I feel pretty strongly that our kids know how important it is that we come ready for this. Alex Parson averaging just under 12 points a game. She's led them. What makes her a difficult matchup for you? I mean, it's like Bree. You know, she can put it on the floor and she can pull the three. So I think that's always hard to match up. You know, yeah, she's a scorer. And, and so she's and, – and she's competitive. You know, her sister was one of the top scorers last year. And, and so, therefore, you know, they were kind of a, you know, two-headed monster last year for us. So, you know, with her, you know, it's just going to be key to make sure that we have, you know, get a hand in her face on every possession. You guys have a five-game winning streak now going into conference play. Well, four games going in, and then you beat George Washington. Is that important to have a hot streak going into an important time like – a-10 conference? I don't necessarily, I tell the kids, I don't necessarily look at win-losses because our, 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 our schedule is so difficult. Mm -hmm. How we're playing, you know, because if we're playing the right way, and that's why I was so pleased with the Christmas tournament, because we played the right way. You know, whether we had lost that main game or lost that middle Tennessee game, you know, we played the right way. And the one thing we tell the kids, I mean, a lot of the games left are 50-50 games. So what gets us 51-49? to 49? It's going to be defense, it's going to be rebounding, it's going to be discipline. Looking ahead to Sunday, you have St. Louis, and their record may not indicate kind of the caliber of teams that they've played. They beat Virginia, and they did schedule a game against UConn, which is an exceptional matchup for an A-10 team. So does that pose kind of a challenge going on the road to face a team that's that battle-tested so far? Always. I mean, and they also played Missouri, who, you know, just beat Tennessee at Tennessee. So, you know, Lisa played a great schedule. She does a great job. They have three freshmen that at different points throughout the season have been all, on the all-rookie pre uh, on the all-rookie, you know, of the week. So they're very talented. They have two seniors back that are tough, you know, as part of their backbone. So um, they're always difficult to play there. I mean, every time we play there, there's always a great crowd. Every time I watch, watch them on tape, there's nobody there, and we always end yeah, up Yeah, I believe last the year they had all those kids there. Yeah, it was like we kids had a great crowd. Yeah. last year, too, <laughs> yeah. against St. Louis. It yeah. seemed like that was the matchup that always seemed to go down in the wire. It yeah, I believe, uh, speaking of that game, Bree had 37 yeah. and going on to double overtime. Mary had a double-double. Yep. We just had them on. Now, going back to that, is that important? Are you going to be – even paying attention to that double overtime game, you're going to look to see what you guys did well, did wrong? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I always watched a game from last year, and that one in particular because G didn't play, so we have m most of the, you know, the so players. So it's like the team. Like, yeah, have, the yeah. team that's back. So I want to see how they went against our certain offenses and how they attacked our defenses. And so it gives, even though they have a lot of change in players, it also gives us an idea what to anticipate. Do you look a little extra at that double overtime game, especially since you were operating without Jamaris mm -hmm. Davis? So it's almost more of a sneak peek of your team this year and what they were able to do by themselves. Yeah, I didn't watch the other game, it, only because I wanted to see, you know, you know, what they did against us with the team that we currently have. And there were some things. They're, they're, they're like us. They, you know, they stay pretty traditional to what they do. So their offenses are pretty similar to what they did last year. You know, one thing differently this year, they played, they played more zone. Last year I've never saw them play possession in the zone this year because they're young, they, they are mixing in some zones. So I think we're going to see a couple different things. And, again, the, the conference, a lot of teams are very, very young, with the exception of maybe Duquesne, who has everybody back. Um, so, you know, it'll be, it'll, it'll be, in my mind, a game that comes down the last five minutes again. Now, I don't know if this matters for you. Do you care where you play Day and Duquesne, the top teams, coming into the preseason in the A-10? Do you, would you rather play them earlier on or towards the end of the season? Does it matter to you? doesn't matter. You're going to play them at one point, and if you're going to play them in then conference tournament time, you're probably going to play them again. So it really doesn't matter, you know, where you play them because every team you play, it doesn't matter. A win against Richmond has the same weight as a win against Dayton. So we're not – we don't really care about records. We just care about where we're going to be seated. Coach, good luck. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. Go right. Thank happy New Year, everyone. <laughs> yeah, happy New Year. Uh, we were actually wondering whether that was acceptable to say. Yeah, that. that's yeah, true. It's, it's Everyone's like, it, they have this weak guideline. Yeah, 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 we were yeah. wondering whether we We're going to break actually... those guidelines, Emmanuel. Happy New Year, Rams. <laughs> happy New Year to everyone. So a big thanks to Coach Gately as well as our lineup and on-the-court guests, Mary Goulding and Bree Cavanaugh. And until next time, for Jackson Heil and Dominic Capone, I'm Emmanuel Barbari. Thanks for tuning in. The Ram with Coach Gately has been a production of WFUV Sports in association with Fordham Athletics and BronxNet TV.